play a little game, Ned, of if you only knew it. We just throw questions at you. Okay. Favorite player as a child? Ernie Banks. No one like him. No one like him. Let's play two. Every day. <laughs> Favorite player now? Favorite player now, I would say um, maybe Mike Trout. Because? Because of how he plays the game, the ability to play the middle of the field, and his relentlessness and his pursuit of greatness. Why isn't he more nationally loved? Um, hard to say. Maybe West Coast? Angels. Angels, yeah. Another market might change him, but I, I do really enjoy watching him. Tough not to like Kershaw, too, but that's a f every fifth day. Best piece of advice you ever got? Um, be kind, be gracious, be grateful. Got it from who? Parents? My parents. Be a blessing every day. What's the worst piece of advice you ever got? Think about yourself first and foremost. I don't know who told me that, but I'm sure somebody did. <laughs> Biggest risk you ever took? Probably coming into baseball, not knowing what it would lead to. And um, while it was a dream of mine, obviously you're, when you begin, your salaries are lower than other professions because so many people would love to do it. And wondering if I'd ever become anything in it. Did you go to college? I did. I went to Northern Illinois University, first in my family to go to school. Dodge a playoff series you'll never forget. Wow. 213 against the Cardinals. Had a chance to go to World Series. Hanley Ramirez gets hit on the eighth pitch of the series. Breaks Deliberate, the rib. some people think. Oh. You think they threw at him? I have. I love Mike Matheny, their manager. I would not doubt that they did. Because <laughs> Hanley was really Hanley was hot against Atlanta in the series before. What's the one player who got away from the Dodgers who you wished had worn the white and blue? Well. I made a mistake with Jason Worth early on. He had a bad hand when I when I first got here, and he couldn't play for a while. And our financial situation wouldn't let me be patient with somebody like that. I would probably say Jason Worth, maybe Carlos Santana, who I get heat from once in a while for trading him. But he did bring us Casey Blake. And where we're at in that place and time, we needed to make that deal. And we also had a young catcher who was pretty good sitting there already in Russell Martin. Player you uh, reg either regret passing on a Someone you could have drafted, didn't draft. Wow. A Ned Coletti mistake. Uh, we could have taken Stanton, I believe. And, uh, really? I think that that one got Out away Notre from Dame us. Yes, we thought perhaps he was going to go to USC and play football. That was the rumor. I let our scouts do their job, and so he went the other direction, and he ended up being a great home Who'd runner. Who'd you take in that draft? I can't recall. Mm -hmm. I probably can recall, but I don't think I want to tell you. <laughs> Favorite stadium beside Dodger Stadium? Wrigley Field, place I grew up in and still to me a landmark. They've done a lot of improvements there. Yes, they have. They've, they've kept it going. When I first went to work, I'd gone there for 30 years as a kid, 25 years as a kid. And then it was almost falling apart. It was almost in a, in a sad state, but the, the Ricketts family has really rejuvenated it. And now it's, it's going to be around for probably another 50 to 100 years. What's your least favorite baseball stadium? Oakland Coliseum. Why don't they let him move to San oh, Jose? That's a, that's a tough one. It reminds me of another one I worked at, Candlestick Park. Oh, Tough, tough place for either team. As Mark Twain said, the coldest winter I ever spent in my life was a <laughs> summer in San Francisco. And at that ballpark, <laughs> oh. you, what ring do you wear? Uh, it's a Cub ring, Cub All-Star game ring from 1990. I have a Giants ring, but I don't dare wear that in, in Los Angeles, as Tommy Lasorda could tell you. Favorite memory as GM of the Dodgers? Favorite memory as GM of the Dodgers would be the slider that Jonathan Broxton threw to Alfonso Soriano to win the division championship series in October of 2008. It's the first time that Dodgers have made it to the postseason victory in a series since 1988. It was my first as a general manager where we actually won a series. Never forget it. I remember sitting behind the Dodger dugout. Two strike day. slider. Jonathan Brock. Three nothing, right? I That's think. right. City that should have a major league team. Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Will they be there? I think they're, they're going to go back. I think they should go back. I think the, an American League East team would be an amazing team in that, in that market with the Yankees close, the Red Sox close, Toronto right down the road. Baltimore, I think it would be a hotbed for a sport. Favorite memory is GM? Probably getting the job. Probably having the opportunity to, to lead the Dodgers and to work in Los Angeles. Sit in that office. Yeah, and to, to have uh, 
have the challenges I had. I've always been challenge oriented, competitive. Was the all time. How the Dodgers going to do this year? I think Dodgers are going to be fine. I think you know people are wondering will they add a free agent this time of season? One more free agent, one more starting pitcher. Will they, what will the team look like in spring training? But we all know you have until July 31st to figure it out. And I think you win 104 games last year, and most of that team comes back. I think they're going to be the class of the division once again. Got to stay under that salary cap. Huh? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a big thing, I think. And uh, whether or not they are, they're able to do that, or whether or not that is really their ultimate plan, we'll find out. But it does change the landscape a little bit. And nobody knows who's going to be a free agent a year from now. Yeah. But if the people who are are eligible to do it come out, you're talking about some of the best in baseball. What makes a good general manager? I think having uh, thick skin, patience. Um, knowing you're going to take a lot of the blame and receive none of the credit and to really be able to evaluate not just talent. I think people who watch a lot of baseball, for example, can tell you who the good players are. But to me, it was always who was inside that uniform. What is the soul of the person? How hard do they play? What is their sacrifice limit? What are they really willing to do to become great? Because winning is not easy. Anybody who thinks winning is easy hasn't done it. But winning is difficult, and I always had to know who is inside that uniform more than what the numbers would tell you on the outside. Do you believe in a good chemistry in a ball club? Too? I do. I think it's important. I believe more in culture than I do in chemistry. I think chemistry comes and goes. I think culture, if you can establish a really good culture, then you're talking. Then you've got a chance to be successful for a very, very long time. I told Andrew Friedman when I first came here, he says, what do you think I need to do first? I says, the culture. The culture needs to change. It needs to be stronger. I told Dave Roberts the same thing. And I think culture is key. You look at teams that, that win a lot of championships, their culture is unique. And I think building that culture is more important than the chemistry. I think culture will lead the chemistry. Chemistry will not necessarily lead the culture. Watch new episodes of Larry King Now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, on demand on Aura TV and Hulu.